Hey, what's up, Wargamers? Welcome back to Building a Better Table. Today, we're going to be working on the top part of Torvarden Keep, or the Beacon Tower, Watchtower of Torvarden for Rangers of Shadowdeep, my new favorite game. This build is going to use a lot of the same techniques as the lower Torvarden build. I'm still going to go through them again because it's it's just one piece as opposed to three. So there's not near as much that I'm trying to do. And there are a few things here that are going to be done a little bit differently. So I've got a piece of foam here that I've already marked out a few measurements on. Let's get that where we can see a little bit better. Now, if you'll notice, I mangled the snot out of this piece of foam board getting it down in my car. Like it just, well, like I cut it and it just would not break clean. So I feel that out of a whole like 12 by whatever huge piece of XPS form, I feel that I'm pretty lucky to have actually gotten um, a two and a half by two and a half. And I'm a little bit shy of a two and a half. Now this map required me to do math for this board. And as I have shared with you y'all in the past, I'm not a huge fan of numbers. I work very well with pictures and colors, but numbers uh get to me so it takes me a little bit longer so what i've got here is a basically 30 by 30 square you know obviously we're missing that corner now of that 30 by 30 square which is two and a half feet we need one and a half feet that's a square in the middle this is that this is this line this is this middle section where the bonfire and the shadow knight and everything else is going to be and then you, your trap door is over here and then you have in the book, it says to put a low wall, but the book is for um, people that are going to do this on their kitchen table. They're not for the extra, those of us that are a little bit extra like me. Um, and maybe you. I don't know how you like to game. And however you game, it's fine. There's no wrong way to do this. This is just the way I like to do it because I like a big cinematic, fun looking board, especially if I'm going to be making content with it. So I've got my 18 by 18 square here. And then I've got another square that is two inches by two inches drawn around that. It's two inches out. Now, I'm going to use some popsicle sticks that are just shy, maybe a quarter inch, third of an inch shy of being six inches long. But I don't need six inches of foam underneath them because I want there to be some underhang. So we're going to cut on this line, on this outside line, and then I'm going to shave this down a very 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 small amount i'm going to try to shave it about about the width of the popsicle stick so that as much as possible i can try to get that to sit flush down in there now i am in the, still in the process of figuring out what i'm gonna do to get around this corner with the sticks I haven't quite gotten there yet i'm a you know painter and um scrap <laughs> scrap builder of scrap terrain by 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 training so I'm not a carpenter, so cutting that stuff to, to fit perfectly is probably not going to be the thing I do. Uh, but that's a little ways down the road. I don't quite have to worry about that just yet. So what we want to do is we want to get this cut. Now remember, when you're cutting this foam with a hobby knife, if you're using a hot wire cutter, just have at it. But if you're using a hobby knife, remember, you don't need to go all the way through it in the first cut. You just want to get a good score. I've got a pencil a line from a dull pencil that I started it with. We want to get a good score in it. Maybe go through that one or two more times and then just crack it to break it. And hopefully I don't mangle this the rest of the way trying to do that. All right, got that excess cleaned off. We're down to our two main squares. Go ahead and said, then I'm going to take this and just kind of, if it's not perfectly even, that's okay. Because if, you know, the, the planks have a little bit of wobble to them, you know, it gives it character. Um, you know, this is, after all, an old watchtower that's probably been sitting in the forest from, you know, ever. Um, so here what we want to do is just put a light score down our line here and then come in from the side and just take that piece off. Okay, we got all that trimmed away, squared up. It's not perfect. 
That's okay. It doesn't need to be perfect because it's going to be covered up and hidden. Now, middle part next. I'm going to handle this the same way I did last time. Because, because it's part of the same building, I'm going to use the same kind of random flagstone-ish type pattern. I'm going to use a very dull pencil to do that. Now, you could very easily, though, if you wanted to, you could lay out a checkerboard and do like a very clear like tile floor or literally whatever you want. This is just what I'm doing because it will match the rest of the building if I do it this way. All right, base texture done. Now you notice I went around the edges a little bit and was fiddling with stuff. What I was doing there is just kind of opening up the where the join and the stones would be because part a little bit of that side will be exposed even once I get the the boards boards around the edges. So I wanted to kind of just go ahead and address that little bit of texture before I went any further. Now this piece, this is ready for gesso. The next thing to do, however will be to create the corners of the building. It is a watchtower, so I envision it as being kind of, you know, a corner arch. Now, I'm not gonna do like a full piece across here like I did on the last one. I'm gonna make two, I'm gonna make a corner piece for each of the four corners. That's gonna come out maybe that far, three or four inches, straight up, you know, 90 degrees, and then have an arch to it, which we'll take a look at that in just a second. But this piece right here, this is ready for gesso and priming. All right, so I've got the big piece gessoed and primed. It's outside on the picnic table drying. While that's doing what it does, I'm gonna work on making these corners. I already got these two more or less shaped up just because I wanted to kind of, you know, see how, how it was gonna look and what I was gonna think of it. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good with that. You know, we'll have one of these on each corner. So we'll, to make this, we want to start with a piece of foam board. We want to measure out three inches. Um, generally speaking, now this is not an all the time thing, but generally speaking in wargaming, a wall is going to be about three inches in 28 millimeter scale. So you want to find a straight flush edge, kind of factory edge of your foam and measure off of that. So I've got two made and one half of a corner made. So I'm going to need two, four, five of these pieces. So I'm going to cut five of these at three inches and then I'm going to cut those pieces down to four inches. Now, I don't have even sides here, so when I go to do my four inches, I'm going to pull from like this. Like I'm going to set four inches and then four inches and then take off the sides. That way I know it's going to be straight sides. And while it may not be perfect, perfectly square, it will be better than having wonky wobbly edges which is what I would have if I were to just cut this off and go from there so I'm gonna mark these off cut them down and then we'll talk about the next step With all of my four by three pieces cut, it's time to put the arches in. Now, once I did the first one, I just used it as a stencil. But let's talk about how to make, how I made the first one. So for that, I used just a simple bullseye compass. Uh, 
put my ring right on the corner and I did these at about an inch and a half and then just gently pull it through to mark your cut and then just fillet it out you know just go slowly don't try to go through the whole thing at one time now the beauty the upside of using a knife like this as opposed to a regular hobby knife is that you get a lot of play in that blade so when you're cutting things that are curved you can flex that knife way into the curve and then just pop it out clean it up now having shown all of you wonderful people how I got the arch made I'm gonna proceed to use one of them as a jig and a stencil and power through cutting the rest of these and then we'll talk about texture all right all the pieces are cut gonna go in with my dull number two pencil and just make my kind of stone pattern that I've been doing throughout this Torvarden project and then one set that I neglected to show in the previous video which I'm going to go over here because it needs to be touched on and that's the use of the tinfoil ball uh, tin ball a piece of tinfoil is one of the one of the best tools in the home terrain crafters toolbox give me one second while I find it. there it is we're just gonna take that and roll it around and mush it in there and that's gonna give us a nice nice kind of rocky texture now with these pieces I'm gonna definitely make sure to bring my bring some texture across the insides and as well as across the edges and the top this time because that was one thing that I noticed the last time I did something like this that I thought could have made it better so I'm gonna remember to do it this time with all of our texture on all of our corner pieces we are ready to go put some gesso on these pieces get them primed up get them glued together get them attached to the main board and then finish painting the main board again i'm going to be going through that with the airbrush i'm going to hit it with some starting with some dark grays up to a light gray and then i'll add in various amounts of different browns and ochres and earth tones into that gray as i go i won't ever empty my pot i'll just keep adding different colors to it and just build up a little bit of that color texture and that variation in the stonework. And then we'll be ready to hot glue the boards around. Okay, so this is all glued together, all painted up. I just hot glued. I understand that some of my corners are a little bit wider than others. I'm, and I'm, I'm just, I'm not worried about that. It, doesn't really bother me so I'm gonna carry on now I'm not gonna wash this yet I want to get the outer rim on it before I do that so I bought some popsicle sticks and I was oh, let me move this out of the way or at least move it partly out of the way there I like that so I bought some popsicle sticks and they came in and they were they're, they're fine you know they're popsicle sticks they're a little under six inches which is ideally what i want to be having on both sides of this so that i hit that mark of two and a half feet however they got here and they look like you know popsicle sticks and i don't want it to be just surrounded by popsicle sticks so luckily the ones that i bought were thin enough that i was able to take a pair of just good sturdy scissors and snip the tips off so that I end up with something that looks a little bit more plankish and a little bit less popsicle stickish. And the plan is just going to be to take them, hot glue all the way around. And it's going to be a little bit rickety because the surface underneath it is not perfectly level. That was a happy accident as Bob Ross would say, you know, I like that it's not going to be perfectly even, and I may intentionally glue some of these down so that they are, you know, a little bit off kilter. Now the corners, the corners I'm still thinking on, but what I'm thinking is that I'm going to come, you know, 
out like this. And then I'm going to just progressively cut and trim down. So place one there and then there. No, that won't work. What if I do this? So I can cut that down to a 45 so it'll fit notch in there. And then I can go this way and get that's I think that's I think that's going to be the one is to come like that a little bit and then just fill it in back as I go. So I may I'm going to I'm not going to do all this on camera because I don't want to have the hot glue in here on this surface. So I'm going to get the glue get the glue hot and we're going to see what happens. I'm do I'm waiting I'm waiting to wash this until I get these on because I'm going to use the same wash on these that I use on this. Okay, so we've got everything washed. We're ready to dry brush. So again, I'm gonna take just some regular old artist acrylic paints, canvas paints. Gonna mix them into about this tone of light gray. And from there, we're going to load up our brush. We're going to knock off as much of the excess paint as we can and we're just going to run this across the stone i'm only doing the stone here i'm really 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 happy with how that wash weathered out that wood so i'm going to leave that alone i'm just going to be focusing on hitting this and then we're going to be ready to set this on top of those other three layers and have a run at the next mission for rangers and here we have the finished top of torvarden been dry brushed been washed been weathered now one thing with this build that I would have done differently slash will do if I ever do anything else where I'm using these kind of popsicle boards like this, and that would be to take all of them after they've been shaped, cut to shape, put them in a bog or a, a bog, put them in a bag or a box with some rocks, and then just shake it around so that those rocks can beat on it and ding it up and weather it a little bit more. Um, it just I didn't I didn't think about it when I was putting everything together. But beyond that, beyond that one minor detail, I am extremely happy with how this came out. I'm really happy that I'm, I've got my elevated play surface for this mission because that was when I read the mission and that was what I saw in my head. I was like, well, I want I don't want the the top of it to just be sitting you know flat on my table. Like I want the lower levels of the watchtower and then to actually have an elevated plane surface for the mission now it's going to mean means that i'm going to have to be very very careful about my movements and everything but at the same time it also means i'm not going to have to stoop over my table um which i always have to do because i am a somewhat taller individual but overall 
really happy with the success of the build. I would do that one thing differently. Um, but this is ready for play. So if you have enjoyed this, or if you have learned something from this, or if you have taken something away from this that you will use to create a better table for yourself, then I would say that my job is complete and it's been a success. That I have something that I'm happy with and hopefully you're gonna end up with something that you're happy with. If you have not hit that like button, subscribe button, or that bell notification button, please, 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 I'm begging you, please consider doing that for me because it does do an enormous amount to help out the channel and to help me grow and to help me continue bringing you content and creating content that I hope you will enjoy. But for today, that's gonna do it. So I hope you have an amazing rest of your day. Thank you so much for stopping to hang out with me for a little bit while I built the roof of Upper Torvarden. And as always, may the dice gods be ever in your favor. And as always, I'd like to say a big, huge, from the bottom of my heart, thank you to our patrons who support us and pledge to us over on Patreon. You guys are the absolute best. If you enjoyed the content you saw here today and that's something that you would like to consider doing to help out the channel go over there check out the link in the description check out the patreon there's a lot of cool stuff over there including access to our discord server talk to me hang out with me talk about our work what we got going on in the hobby um some shout outs all kinds of cool stuff check it out if that's something that you think you would be into and regardless of whether or not you do that i want you to know that i am incredibly grateful that you decided to stop by and spend part of your day with me today, rolling dice and pushing toy soldiers around. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day. And as always, may the dice be ever in your favor.